Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a great video for you today. It is the review of American History X, a great movie. I watched way back, but I watched it again for this review. And I'm gonna go over a few scenes and what, what touched on me. It's a really good, uh, uh, I think it's educational. Uh, but we're gonna get into that in a minute here. Please check me out on YouTube member programs, Patreon, Discord. Check out my merch, this, the book, Gangster Redemption. Uh, it's doing great and a lot of people are loving that. Uh, check out podcasts out, The Real Deal with me, Larry Lawton. It's going great every new episodes, every Monday and Friday. Uh, we've been all over the place, so we're gonna continue that. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe. We really appreciate that. Uh, all right, we're gonna get into this movie. First of all, the movie American History X. Talking about uh, 24 years ago, this movie came out. Uh, and you know, it's relevant today. That's what makes this movie, I think, interesting. Ed Norton plays a really conflicted guy. He comes from a racist family. Some things were said, and then growing up, he becomes a racist. Then he goes to prison on a couple of, uh, on a scene. Uh, he becomes a neo-Nazi bullshit. This is in a Southern California uh, setting, but he does become a neo-Nazi, and then he ends up going to prison, and we're gonna talk about some of the scenes in prison. A shorter summary of that, he, he gets uh, raped in prison by his own people. Uh, the scenes are amazing, and I'm, I'm gonna go over to the scenes I think it need to be done. So we're gonna start out with the one scene that grabs you into the movie, and it's uh, these 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 black, three three black kids are trying to break into his car. He comes out, and, and you gotta look a little piece of the scene, and, and I'm gonna talk about it. There's a black guy outside. He's breaking into your car. How long has he been there? I don't know. The big scene here, even in the beginning, and I had to stop it quickly. It was. Uh, his younger brother looks up to him. Obviously, he got sucked into this, uh, the white supremacist movement, which any kind of these movements that that, that uh, aspire to hate, it, it drives me crazy, because I, you know, I very rarely use the word hate, uh, because I think it's such a negative emotion. But the young kid comes and talks about this. They don't try to scare him off. You'll see what happens. You know, what really always gets me in these shows, I don't know, the clips have 20 bullets anymore. I know they used to have uh, 14, 16. So far I shot off 20 bullets. I counted 20 bullets. This is something I do. Uh, it came out shooting. Would that really happen? You know, I guess if you're, if you're ready for it and, and you're loaded for bear and everything like that and you saw a guy had a gun, you would do that. But this guy comes out firing. Uh, obviously these kids were wrong to, to steal a car. But do you really kill someone for that? You know, some people on here are gonna say, yeah, kill him. Uh, you're protecting your property. I think going in your house and protecting you, absolutely. You just fucked with the wrong bull. Come on. Come here! You should have learned your place on the fucking basketball court. But you fucking monkeys never get the message. There's a scene before here uh, on a basketball court where he plays and they play for the court. What I mean, that I mean, they didn't play for money. They had whites against blacks and whoever won the game keeps the court while well, the white guys won. I don't buy that anyway. Uh, uh, in 1998, don't buy it. My father gave me that truck, you motherfucker. You ever shoot at violence? Uh, you come here, you shoot at my family? This scene is brutal. Uh, so, I mean, I get it because I was in that kind of a lifestyle. The kids seeing this is what really changes me in the movie more than anyone. I'm gonna teach you a real lesson now, motherfucker. Put Stop your fucking me. mouth on the curb. Oh, Get Put it on the curb right now! Before this scene, you see him pointing the gun at his head. Obviously, in the scene when he was running to the car and he shot, again, 20 bullets, the chamber came back unlocked. That means it's out of bullets. It's empty. Now he clicked it forward again, but there's, he didn't put another clip in there. So what is he going to fucking shoot him on? Or he just scared him. Uh, I don't know if that's a scare tactic or not, or, or it's just something that they just blow by. I don't know. That's it. Yeah, no! What this showed me in the clip, and, and, and later in the movie, actually, this kid, Derek's brother, becomes a wants to become what his brother was, a white supremacist. And this clip showed he still had a heart. So what this shows me in everything, hatred and prejudice is not in you. 
it's taught. It's a, a, a thing that we show other people. So if you have an open heart and you have an open mind and you have a, a, a loving heart, you're going to show love and people are going to get that, especially loved ones who are around you every day. This just goes to show me this young kid was so influenced by his uh, uh, older brother. This showed that he lost his heart right there. This kid really had a heart because he saw a super violent act and he's screaming no, no, and, and he did it anyway. So you, you got to think about that. Now they come to arrest him, and I didn't like this face picture. Now turn around! Put your hands behind your head! I have a zillion tattoos. There's not one racist tattoo on my body. Uh, you know, to put a swastika, what it represents is to me the... the it is so fucking wrong to fucking, you know, uh, aspire to be Hitler, a Nazi. That is fucking just out of my mind. I mean, I, I'm a history buff and I love to read. So I don't know if you did that and it's on you. Try to get it off. I don't know why you have it on. Get down on your knees right now! You see that smirk? That smirk. You know, fucking, that was an emotional smirk to me. Like, who the fuck? You just did all this shit. I could see you being mad. But this is a psycho to me. I know he doesn't play a psycho when he changes in the movie. But to me, this is the psycho part. That poor kid. I mean, it's showing the emotions in a movie. But this skinhead is, uh... Obviously has a, a screw loose. And here is a young man that looks up to his brother. Just a wild scene, and it, gi it gives you the, the, the premise of the, of the movie, The Hate. Now, obviously you see the way the showers are set up. In penitentiaries that I was in, we didn't have that. I told you only Lewisburg and J Block, and they had four four lines of showers. Here they got showers all over, but they do have them. Obviously, I was in the military and they had showers like this. We also didn't have a guard standing there. They put you in there, lock you in, and then you're in there for 15 minutes, and they come get you. You see now, here's kind of like where I go, okay, a little bullshit. Derek's in the shower alone, everybody leaves, he's just sitting there. The guard would either said, move it, let's go. It's not just gonna sit, you let you take the fucking shower as long as you want. What do you think, you can fucking sit there and jack off and fucking take a shower? No, you can't do that. You don't got your time to do this shit. Everybody goes and everybody comes, that's it. End of story. since he's doing this, you're not going to be on guard. You don't turn your back to the shower. You don't do your hair, do everything. You don't go sit there and wait for it to happen. Listen, I know of people who, uh, I know of a friend that, that was actually gang raped his first day in Florida State Prison by five guys. But they run up in his cell and put a pillowcase over his head. And then they, they raped him. And uh, here, here's what you, you're gonna understand here in a second. You wanna be a sweet boy? Fuck you! We gonna treat you like one. Now the guard turns around and, and, and walks away. You know, all guards paid off like this much. I never seen it like that overtly. Can it happen? Absolutely. But here is my issue with this scene. There's all these guys holding him down. You're raping a man's ass. How does this guy get an erection to rape this guy right here? I mean, no sexual play, no nothing, no, I I, I don't know. Am I that fucking realistic with, with, with stuff like this? Maybe, you know, I don't know. 
people walk around with a heart on all fucking day. I don't know. It, it just blew me away. They could just do this and rape somebody, rape somebody. And obviously, and come, it, it, it really blew me away. I, 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 this scene was that unrealistic. If they did him in the, in a, in the bed, you know, in his cell, and they ran up in on his cell and put a pillowcase over his head and came in and held him down and, I don't know if somebody did something like that. I can understand. But rape's real, and it does happen, but it's usually by psychopaths. So either this guy's a total psychopath, and, and can they ejaculate? I guess so. Maybe I got to fucking ask a psychologist that. I don't know. Uh, I couldn't, and I guess I'm just not a psychopath. That was real sweet. Fuck you! <laughs> That hitting against the wall, you know, I've done that to somebody. I told you about that. Not not a bathroom wall, but a in a cell wall and a concrete wall. Pretty much fucking slam and fucking goes down. This happened here. Great acting. Great acting. Just a great scene. I mean, however you want to look at that scene. But that showed him, you know, he, he thought his white race was all great and all that. Uh, he's seeing another person, and that's what makes this so great. This scene I'm going to show you in this part is pretty wild. The scene starts with Stacy Keach, then he plays the head of the white supremacist gang. I guess trying to recruit Derek's younger brother into the racism of lifestyle, the skinheads. I'm jumping around, but you have to see what he says to this guy, and, and boy, did it hit home. And if we scare the fuck out of people, and a few people get killed in the process, yeah. You gonna put that in your paper, Danny? <laughs> hey, man. Well, look who's here. The return of the soldier. What are you doing here, Danny? Come on, man. I had to check it out. You knew I was gonna come. See, you know, people try to manipulate these young people in their brains. Danny's a young guy. De uh, uh, Derek just gets out of prison. They're having a party for him, actually. And he has a confrontation with Stacey Keach, who's the leader of the skinhead gang, who's trying to recruit the younger brother. You know, you, you're gonna see the scene that, that, that gets me. I'm gonna stop it here. Take it easy. But chill out. You're on safe ground. You don't have to watch your ass around here. <laughs> He's making fun of him. You don't gotta watch your ass around here. Now, you gotta remember this Derek, uh, who went to prison, was raped in prison by his own people, and he befriended a black guy, you know, he worked with, and uh, he saw that the, that the racism wasn't what he believed. He changed his whole views by being around people of the other race. If you don't have friends that are, 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 are I call it a, a, a whole, uh, everything, a bunch of everybody's, uh, then you have a skewed view of, of reality. And that's why I don't believe in homeschooling. Uh, I, I think people should just go to schools and public schools or, or wherever with a whole bunch of different people. Understand bullying, understand how to fight, everything. You can do it, you can do it all there. But we're just so damn glad you're back, Derek. It's only natural you should feel a little funny. I don't feel funny, Cam. You know, you made the fat kid a little nervous. He thinks the joint messed with your mind. It did. about the band that did this I, I I looked up they're actually an anti hate group band they they did this you know play in the movie but they're an anti hate group band it's pretty cool uh to see that they got extras and stuff like that in the band anti hate and they're playing it you know on a hate rally bullshit in the movie uh pretty amazing when you're ready you ought to come and talk to me about it well you can forget about that I'm done with it cam yeah well I mean I know you Grew out of that shaved head bullshit a long time ago, thank God. Hear what he said? Now, this is the leader of the gang. You grew out of that shaved uh, head bullshit. They know it's bullshit. They, they, they're saying things in here that if you pick up on, you're going to understand it's bullshit. I understand how you feel. I mean, you've just done some hard time. Don't you fucking talk to me about hard time. You don't know a thing about it. Hey, I've done mine. You didn't do shit. I found out about your little prison story. You did two months, and then you rolled over on two kids and let them go down for you. So don't feed me your fucking lies, Cameron. You hear that? 
He found out the bullshit. Usually those people, you know, you'll hear him do a few months or a year or something. There's more to the story. Now, I'm not saying everything. And I'm not saying everybody. It showed it right here. And I'm glad they made put this in the movie. If you come near Danny again, I will feed you your fucking heart, Cameron. I won't have to. He'll come to me. I'm more important to him now than you'll ever be. You see, I would have kept beating the shit out of him. That's the difference. Uh, you know, this guy, Derek, talk about conflicting emotions. In, in the beginning, he's talking about all this negative stuff. You know, talking about how, you know, this white supremacy, you know, it's all bullshit when they started on a story with the Rodney King stuff and the, and the L.A. riots. That, you know, now he's saw the light. You know, he was around people. He's seen good and bad. He's seen bad in his own people. Uh, he was raped. I'd have kept beating the shit out of that motherfucker. You're going to check this scene out. And this scene has uh, Danny, which is the younger brother, and Derek. Uh, and, you know, you're seeing the change of people. And uh, this is pretty powerful. Hey! Fuck you! Danny, easy. Who do you think you are? Danny, Danny relax. Relax. Who do you think you are? Take it easy, Dan. Take it easy. I fucking hate you, Dan. Look, I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry. You weren't supposed to see that tonight. I told you not to come. Fuck you, man. That was so fucked up. I know, I know. God, it wasn't supposed to happen that way, all right? It's showing the connection of two brothers after that incident at the, uh, the it was the party for Derek coming out of prison and he wanted out of that bullshit and he didn't want his younger brother to see it who's still getting caught up in that bullshit. So uh, it, it just showed me the humanity of the story and, and how he wanted to get his brother out of it. Now in the beginning of this movie, Derek was all into it, had justifications for a lot of the shit that went on in this movie. Uh, in the beginning until he, you know until he saw the light, you know, everybody has to get a different set of opinions I hope you do most people should you know the more I watch these movies and the more I watch And I love watching movies that I just shoot them up movies. This is a movie about hate how people change remember that I, I, I couldn't stand uh, Derek in the beginning of the movie could not stand him uh, the hate, the vitriol, the try to justify shit, and you know why should we help people up? I mean, no humanity. Then you see him kill somebody, do what he did, go to prison. He got three years. Obviously, they were trying to break in his shit, but he got three years in prison, and he comes out a changed man. And he got came out a changed man because of the power of working with another black man or another person from another race. And that can happen with any. And you know you have hatred from Spanish people to black people to Chinese people to whatever it is. I hate it. I hate hate because I don't like the word hate. Hate's just such a negative word. Please, people, try not to use the word hate. As you can see, Derek is still trying to get his brother away from that hate. He understands it because he was there. But he's trying to help people, and I love that. I saw a car cruising by the house last night when I pulled out of there with Seth. If you get home before me today, just give a look around the street, all right? Make sure there's nothing going on. Oh, man, this is, this is bad. You're after you, man. A little cool off. If I made it through Chino, you know, this would be a piece of cake, right? You know, uh, Derek is telling his younger brother Danny, you know, because this the, the white supremacists are after him because they he, what he did to their to Cam, their fucking leader, Stacy Keach. And the kid is starting to it, and they got such a great bond, but the kid is conflicted, like he was convicted. And that's what makes this fucking movie good. You know, if you really get into movies, I do anyway. But uh, this coming up really tore me apart. Keep your head up, all right? Things are gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. I love Derek's attitude, you know? Things are gonna be fine. And, and that's the best attitude to have, I love it. <laughs> okay, all right, see Hey, you. hey, Dan. I'll see you at home. It's just sad to me. I'm not telling you, watching this movie a few times, I watched it uh, yesterday just for this, and it's rough. He's got a feeling, man. I'm telling you, and I believe in that. I, I do believe in that stuff.
That was the kid because he stopped the book bullying in the other room, and they had a little what I, I call it a beef. You could see in this kid's eyes right now, he knows he fucked up. He knows his life is over. Uh, and, you know, just like that, the kid's life is over. And for what? For what, man? I always say make good choices, think. And if you do, you're, gonna, you're not gonna do stupid shit. Get out of my way! All right, get out of my way! Get out of my way! Let him go! Oh, no! No! Oh, no! 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You know, I know this is crazy, and I know it's a tough scene, and Larry's brain is fucked up. I'm thinking about a white shirt. He's wearing a white shirt. Uh, obviously, such great. He got nominated for an Oscar. This is powerful. Oh no, no! It's so powerful, man, I'm telling you. And it's powerful because of, uh, he knows he did it, you know? As a guy who, you know, I hope to always have a positive influence on somebody. I don't want that negative influence and think that I, I was the cause of something. Even now, I mean, uh, and, it, it, it's amazing, and it's amazing. You know, even scenes can bring back a lot of memories of people and stuff like that, so it's pretty powerful. So I guess this is where I tell you what I learned. My conclusion, right? Well, my conclusion is, hate is baggage. Life's too short to be pissed off all the time. It's just not worth it. Is it that the truth? I have to end there because hate is baggage. I, you, I, I've you, i always said this. I don't like the word hate. It's a negative emotion that draws from you. Life's too short. He has young kids and it happens. It's out there. You, you see it in Chicago and New York and LA, a lot of the big cities, even the small cities, things happen and, and you wonder, wow, that could have been me. Well, just a powerful movie. Listen. American History X, an older movie, 1998, about hate. But it shows you that fucking hate on both sides. Hate that doesn't do anything. It, it just perpetuates more hate. It, it, it's just a, it's a good, le I, I call it a life lesson movie. Check it out, American History X with Ed Norton, Oscar, uh, nominated for an Oscar back then, didn't get it. Enjoy it. Please make good choices out there. You know, go hug somebody today, you know. Go open the door for an old lady. Make a good choice and have a great day. See you Tuesday.